Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. All right. Thank you, Mr. Producer. We are back, and I am joined by Catherine Manning. Catherine, so nice to see you. Uh, welcome uh, back to the show. Your last show was awesome. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's great to see you. It's great to see you in the flesh. Same here. Now, um, can you kind of review for the audience uh, a little bit about what I, I mean? There's so much to your life, which is amazing, but um, uh, the the crux of it and then i understand that you want to uh, tell me about uh one correction that you want to make but first let the audience uh review uh who is um miss Catherine manning oh <laughs> oh metaphysical me well i have a business called southern pride spirituality and i'm here in my home office in los angeles which isn't sunny today which is so wonderful because i hate the sun i think i'm a bit of a vampire i really mean it um, <clears throat> and uh <laughs> i work at home and thank you, COVID, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, I, I'm a psychotherapist and I do all sorts of healing work. I hate the word healer though. I hate that word. I don't know what it is. It just drives me a little bit nuts. I think it kind of sounds fruitcakey, but um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I work with people, you know, human beings, and there's a cat here and a dog here, but I don't work with them. I just, they just follow me around and drive me a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. and, but what I do is <clears throat> these, I do these protocols that I've just learned over the years and done a lot of certifications and licenses and and um, continuing education credits. And I, I just love my work. And plus I see energy a little bit. So I can do, I love the work of Donna Eden and that's about meridians and chakras and kinesiology. So I do some hands-on work. <clears throat> but last time you asked us a wonderful question about family systems. And I described a situation that I just love because I, I tend to live in a universe of multiple realities anyway. So let's say a, a family sitting at a, at a dining room table and they have dinner. And then the next day, the family, because I also have a pastor license besides a clinical one, so I can see families, not like see energy wise, but they can come and see me individually. You work with everybody. I got you. Yeah, you got it. Okay. So let's say the mommy comes in and says one story about the family dinner. Then the dad comes in the next day and says the same thing. And then talks about the dinner and it's completely different than the, than the son and then the daughter. <clears throat> and they're all different. But you asked if I could do the work of Byron Katie with the family or individually. And I just plowed onto something else. The answer is you do it individually because it's questioning stressful thoughts. And so everybody's going to have a different stressful thought. And that's the answer that you didn't get. So there it is. That's the answer. It, you say, daughter, what's your stressful thought? And daughter says, blah, blah, blah. And I say, is it true? And you absolutely know it's true. And then, then you do each one individually. That's the answer. I see. And you have a bunch of YouTube videos on the work of uh, it's um, of Byron Katie. Can mm -hmm. you explain to the audience who Byron Katie was? Please. Yes, I can. She still is. She um, is a incredibly <clears throat> clear teacher who has a very simple way to make you free. And she just we just identify, strategize, write down stressful thoughts. You apply four questions and turn the questions around. And hopefully you get to freedom like I have. And it sounds very simple. It's radical. It really is. She was a terrible, terrible drug addict, alcoholic, and rageaholic. And her family got her finally into <clears throat> a rehab in Santa Monica about 25 years, 30 years ago. And she hated herself so much she slept on the floor. And she saw a cockroach on her leg one morning. And she heard this laughter erupt. And it was her. And she had this huge blowout awakening. She couldn't find words and her husband would yell at her and say, hey, gee, damn it, Katie. And she'd go, she'd have a thought. She, he shouldn't be yelling at me. But the thought would not coincide with her reality. And she found that was stressful and the work was born. And for the rest of her life, she is, I mean, she has devoted her life to going around the world, finding, telling, ha having people find out this is what is supposed to happen, even when it's the worst thing. I'm not supposed to. It's, it's, that sounds way too easy. But I've seen people change in front of my eyes and find out that even, and I really want you to listen, even the death of a child is how it is supposed to be. It, it is pretty good. I got goosebumps. And it sounds like, I mean, people probably get really angry with that. But this kind of thing is pretty amazing when you sit with Katie and she simply asks you, is it true? And you absolutely know it's true. How do you react when you believe the thought? And you start to believe, you see a thought's innocent, a thought's just a thought. But when we attach a belief to it, it gets stressful. Just any thought, any that, thought. Could that be like a, one of those limiting belief type things where something- Well, most, any belief to me is limiting because if I believe a thought, it's gonna limit me. 
See, it's like when somebody said, I see, I dig God. I really dig God, but I don't believe in God because that's too limiting. But the magnificence of this experience that I have every day is, I guess it's God or dog or whatever. It's something, but I don't call it a belief because it's that's that conceptualizes something that puts a frame around this magnificence. So therefore, I don't believe in it. But I, I have a thought like God is. Now, um, <clears throat> well, just to, to go back uh, and um, I used uh, was was um, uh, Byron uh, Katie saying that uh, things are predetermined when you brought up the, the death of the child. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, oh, no, no, I don't think so. I think no. she just what it is. Say again, please. I think she just loves what is. In other words, um, OK, let's say I'm driving somewhere and I'm on the freeway because I live in L.A. and there are a lot of freeways. Okay. And really wanting to get to this place and i have a, a flat tire and that really pisses me off because i'm not going to get to where i'm supposed to be but if i love what is there's no way that can be wrong and another example last thanksgiving i fell down in my kitchen i couldn't get back up but because of the i mean i don't know what happened but i lay on my floor and i noticed that the underneath my island was filthy dirty and I just laid there and noticed it for like 45 minutes. And it really was dirty. I just couldn't get up. I don't, I never knew what was wrong with my poor little body. But I laid there for like, four, and the dinner was cooking and everything was I thought maybe burning. I didn't try to take myself to the phone. I didn't try to do anything. I just lay there because somebody had to lay there and I loved what it was. And I swear to you, I was there for 45 minutes and then I got up and cooked. Were you in pain? Nope. Just uh, not able to get. Yeah, up. I just, I just accepted what. I mean, you really have to understand. One gets. To, <laughs> you just got really concerned for me. I really wonder what it was. Well, yeah. I no, I'm, I'm just trying to understand. You, you, so. uh, well, what it, what it is is that when you, when you just don't, when you don't resist what is, you're. I mean, I'm not a fool. If something, if it had happened again, I would have run to the doctor and figured something out. But I just lost the power in my legs and my my knees. Now I've have I have problems with my bones and my hips and everything sometimes, but I wasn't that concerned. I just knew that there was something happening and I was supposed to be on that floor at that moment. And you just accepted that? That's it, loving what is. And I just got up and then I cooked and the dinner was perfect. So was that kind of like maybe you would tell me when you got that McDonald's commercial and uh you were kind of uh, at the crossroads uh, of and that just happened how does that work into the i don't want to say plan. so you talking about when i was in india yeah so give me more tell me so more. so so you you got the news that um you got this commercial which was gonna it was gonna be huge right so financially mm -hmm. uh you had hit you had stumbled a, a little bit and this was going to bring it all back uh in that moment what would what would byron what would katie byron katie say uh something huge like that all of a sudden comes into your life she wouldn't have said anything i she probably would have just um said where's your proof you haven't done it yet okay. so i made a story about it which was i'm supposed to be a therapist that means that because i got the money now i can go to school but that's not what she would have said she wouldn't have said anything because she's too smart i said well this is significant this is auspicious i have the money now so i can go to graduate school because i got the money even though my guru laughed at me for saying that <laughs> she would have said anything she would have gone oh good honey she wouldn't have said a thing because she's not stupid she wouldn't have made up a story i made up a story she always says drop your story in other words <clears throat> once i said to her something about being a woman she said where's your proof <laughs> she's really that literal She's really that literal. Some When she was uh, do, having her awakening, somebody said, oh, Katie, I love your car. And she gave him the car. <laughs> Wait, there's better. Somebody walked in and said, I love your house. She gave them the house. She had to be restrained. Her husband, Paul, had to stop her from doing these things. She just could She can't stop this thing that happens to her. She listens literally. She taught me to listen literally. So my practice is actually really good because people, I don't answer questions unless they, they ask like a yes or no question. I got really good with this, but I'm not quite as good. I'm a little bit more flamboyant. But in India, it meant, yeah, you're supposed to be a therapist. You got the money, go back and do it. That was an auspicious sign, but that's not what Katie would have said at all. She would have said, oh, have you done it yet? That doesn't, it doesn't, wouldn't mean anything to her because it does, 
that's not how she is, but that's how I am. I'm still very dramatic. And one thing that you bring to your practice, which uh, <laughs> which we did, I don't think we discussed very much, is that if someone wants to come into your office and do a session with you and be a victim, you'll say, um, "Not not Out. here." Yeah. Tell me, tell me, yeah. uh, tell me more about that. If you could expand on that. Well, I'm a little bit, um, I think, kind of brutal, and and I've been called um, harsh and um, too strident. And it's not like I don't, I don't take that as a as a as an insult really sometimes because I don't speak woundology you know there's a whole thing and and I think that's Carolyn Mace's um, uh, name for it you know people just talking woundology because one I mean I will never forget about 15 years ago I walked into a restaurant to meet a group of women that I knew and they were all talking about their inner child shit I, uh, okay it's all right. It, it, their inner child stuff and it's like what the hell i don't want to be here it's like i I'm <laughs> around three times make the sign of the cross and spit and leave i mean i felt <laughs> tainted i said what are you doing well we all have we all relate we all there were negative bonding and i thought this is not it and they were they were mad and i got ostracized oh gosh and then um you know it, it it's just like it was so vile and and i really watched and so people will come People started coming to me every now and then. They'd say, I think I need to recover a memory of abuse and incest. I said, honey, if it ain't there, it didn't happen. Well, how do you know? I said, because I know. Now you can get out or you can start talking real. And usually, I mean, what do they do? Report me? You know, I okay, I've been reported about five times by my bipolar sister. So I became unafraid of that. She's cuckoo bananas and that's actually actually very very scary and horrible that somebody goes after your livelihood but she's so <clears throat> borderline bipolar oh wow well yeah. um before i want to see what the audience has to, has to say here okay. um uh but before that let, let me let me ask you uh i know I, I i asked you what you preferred in your practice was to work with individuals or to work with families and uh, isn't kind of the working with a family i mean when you have them all together, do you change what you do because they're all there or is your approach different? No, I don't think so. I think I, um, I love working with families and I, and people say, they love to say dysfunctional family. And I go, what, where, I mean, what do you, that's a really great thing to say. And can you tell me what that means? And I had a girl in here, she was, she's 24, 27 or something, 20, and she came and her family's so, they, they're just all so spoiled because you have to be kind of rich to come to me. And so they're all so spoiled. It's like, oh, you, oh no, did you not get your avocado toast this morning? <laughs> like, oh my God. So I said, okay, where's your family dysfunctional? Did you not get everything you needed? Well, I don't think they, they're interested in me. No, they only made every soccer game. They gave you did it, but they, I mean, she got more, I God, I said, so where is the dysfunction? Well, <clears throat> I just feel so left out. I said, you feel left out because you are a rotten bitch and you are <laughs> appropriately. That's so that's how I talk. Uh, yeah, it's refreshing they in this day and age. Back, they come back, they come back, they like it because no one's telling them the no truth. No one talks to them like that. They don't. And I, that's how I talk. Not, I mean, I don't always curse, but oh, yeah. well, I mean, it's, it's real. Oh, she, uh, she's yeah. coddled. <laughs> yeah, like, that's extreme, but that happened like a couple of weeks ago. Well, I mean, like with, with someone like that, um, you know, is that just a privilege, uh, uh, overwhelming reality or? That's, 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 that's unfortunately millennials. And that's, that's kids that are just so. And I mean, I, I when I was in school, I worked um, at <clears throat> NYU. I was able to work in a population that was really they were these were abused kids. You know, these were kids. I go up into Harlem, and they had iron marks on their bodies from the burns their mother put on their bodies. And I mean, uh, come on, they were really hurt. They had a they had a vernacular. They were so used to it. They would talk about it as if I mean they were numb to it. They were dissociating. You know, and I think about those kids, and I think about these kids sometimes. And I go dysfunctional. Yeah. They don't know dysfunctional. They, to, to, they just know they just know words from the internet, from social bloody media, you know, and and this listen to, which is really tragic in a way because you know that that kind of repetition. And so my suggestion to all the families is: please send your children to a third world country for one year to do volunteer work. 
and then bring them back and let them talk about dysfunction. Wow. That's what I say. I, I swear to God, that's what I say. And then I say, you join them. How do you explain to that, uh, the, the millennial, um, you know, you don't have it bad. You, um, you, they, you, you can't, you can't say anything. Yeah. Because they think they do because they get so much support for their nonsense. I see. But I don't indulge them. I don't go, oh, how does that make you feel? Mm. Well, mm, uh, I say, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I say, that's what I say. Well, uh, uh, I, I guess they don't hear that. From so don't come house. to me. Don't come to me, kids out there, because I ain't going to be nice. I don't want to really encourage them to come because I don't encourage. I don't I don't suffer fools. I mean, that's so they're so silly and they can question their thoughts like my family's dysfunctional. I can say, is it true? That would be the best thing to do. And many of them do. Um, do this 27 year old did a worksheet of Byron Katie's with me and she she came real far after that. Oh, so you saw some improvement in the in the. Oh, I, made her, I asked her to do a worksheet. Yeah, she was projecting all over the place. She was really blowing it at work. She's a teacher in Brooklyn and she was really ruining it with her coworkers. I said, you better get off this high horse of yours, honey. And so she did. I saw her in Zoom a couple of times. And so she did a, a worksheet about this, this guy she worked with. And um, she did. And she went far. Nice. Well, you are good. Look at that. I'm really good. Yeah, but I'm not going to leave them hanging with just the bad words, usually. Well, uh, let me see what the audience has to say here. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Producer, what's coming in? Uh, uh, instant <laughs> feedback. What, what do people want to know? All right, we have one just come in. Sally in Boston wants to know, are the people we attract in our lives a sign of our personality? A what? sign? Or is that it's not a sign of our personality? S-I-G-N? Yes, a sign. Um, a sign of our, well, I think water attracts its own level. So um, I'm certainly going to hopefully hang out with people who are as smart as I am. And as, um, well, let's see. Yeah, not sign, but I say would, would say. <clears throat> so imagine iron filings on a grid, right? You know, and here's a positive, here's a negative. And some, and, you know, people kind of like come in and sort of wobble between both I don't want to get too weird here, but like, <laughs> I don't even know that there are many of us here. You know, there's probably just one kind of splitting off into various ideas. So, yes, I guess so. So, yeah. so, so it's something to that saying, uh, the birds of a feather flock together. Like, Yeah, there you go, Casey. That was so cool that you said that. Birds of a feather flock together. Water attracts its own level. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, let me that was good. That was great. Thank you. Thank you, Sally from Boston. Yeah. Thank you, Sally. Uh, what else you got, Mr. Producer? Mr. Producer. We have uh, Kelly in Los Angeles says, how do we keep our thoughts positive during the worst of times? Why would you? How can you keep your thoughts positive? Why would you do that? There are no new concepts. Just question the stressful ones and then they'll get they'll all get good. Here's what you do. Kelly from Los Angeles, write down your dreadful thoughts like it's all really bad. The market is crashing and question them. www.thework.com. Go to one belief at a time and question it. That'll keep them positive, or at least it'll turn it around. The world is ending. And then you get to the turnarounds. The world isn't ending. And then you go, shit, the world isn't ending. <laughs> Whoops. But, but what if it feels... Uh, it will feel like at, it. At the time, it feels it like... It will. Real. It does, because... Our, okay, it does. Every day, I have these dreadful moments of insanity where I think... I, I'll never retire. My portfolio is tumbling. Everything's crashing. <clears throat> so I'll. So that's just a moment because I'll talk. I, I don't want to talk myself out of it immediately because it will come back if I do. Because the ego will say, oh, come on, Catherine. No. So I'll stop. I, I don't do this so much anymore because I've done this for 20 something years, but I will write down <clears throat> things are terrible. My health is terrible. I'll even, I even once wrote down, I'm going to die alone. That I laughed because I thought I, I want to do that. But I wrote down <clears throat> the, world, my, the market's crashing. So I wrote it down. I sat down. The market's crashing. Is it true? Well, from everything on the news. Yeah. Okay. Is it true? Yes. How do I react when I think that thought? And I wrote, it's just my heart was pounding. My father was a stockbroker. I saw them lose great sums of money, gain great. You know, I saw this. I have a whole history of, of proof that, that it can crash. And I write it down. And then I sit with the question, who would I be 
if I didn't believe the thought the market was crashing and I just pop into this like well it's a thought that's that's doing it it's not the fact that the market's crashing because it could have already turned around and who knows what that's even real because we all know that's emotion you know whatever so I sit with that and I feel that and then I turn it around the market isn't crashing that could be true or true and I do all the time I mean it takes a long time it takes probably an hour <clears throat> and then I see that my thoughts are what are hurting me and I can get to positive, negative, and none of it's, and it's just all becomes very, very even and free. So that's how you do it. And in terrible times, you can get to positive thoughts that way. And you don't have to, but you can by writing down the stressful thoughts and questioning them. Good, good exercise. Um, what would you uh, say um, in, um, do you know anything about meditation? Uh, do you support it? I do. I've been a meditator most of my adult life since I was about 20 years old, maybe even earlier. And I support it. I do it every day. I have. I don't do it for very long now because my life is really quiet and peaceful between the times I'm not. But um, yes, I do. <clears throat> I have a, some meditation videos. I've all. I've done different techniques, but right now I count the breath. In fact, I'll teach you the breath right now. Okay, here you go. I'm closing my eyes and I'm going to count. I count in through the nose to seven. I hold four and I blow out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I do that 10 times to settle. Now, when you start meditating, you're going to jump around. They call it monkey mind because the nervous system takes a really long time to settle. That's miraculous. Don't stop that. It's, it's going to happen. And then <clears throat> they say, don't quit before the miracle because it will happen where you just go bonk. So you only want to start five minutes and you want to stay at five minutes for at least 15 to 30 days. Then you want to do 10 Then you want to do 15 and you don't want to change that. And you want to do it every day. That's the whole key. That's it. And meditation, it the first fruit, it says in the 12-step programs, Al-Anon, AA, all those 12-step programs, that the first fruit of meditation is emotional balance. I'm an I was a really unbalanced. And I can get that way. But if I sit and meditate, and I I don't do people say, oh, I have all those tapes and, and I listen to it. That's contemplation. That that to me is a meditation. That's listening to something and getting my mind stimulated. Watching thoughts like clouds, that's contemplation to me. Meditation is just following the breath and sitting. Just sit. Try to do it at the same time every day. Try to have a little ritual. I ring a bell. Sometimes I, I don't listen to tapes. I don't listen to music. I just sit. It's just so, God, it's so simple. We can't help but do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think we're all in trances anyway, so why not do it? Why not support the trance? Guys, uh, Catherine Manning, Catherine, let me give you the um, the last word here. Anything you want to leave the audience with, and then let us know how to get a hold of you, please. Oh, wow, this time goes so fast. I love talking about myself. Okay, well, the last thing is <clears throat> there's um, a whole a lot of there, we we have to be our own healer. There's not we don't need anybody else, but we just have to understand this is a weird life, this thing called life. And all you have to do is sit quietly, breathe. And there's all sorts of things you could do. Just get one friend, breathe one or two times and call Casey. <laughs> no, <laughs> www.southernfriedspirituality.com. Also a YouTube channel. And my videos are really rough. I love them. I have a deal that I only do them once. No second take. So they're really rough. <laughs> called spiritual minute with gopi katie i love them i do them and um and i'm katherine manning and i'd love to meet people i love to meet people and then i like to get rid of them just as fast because i'm a bit misanthropic just kidding okay bye thank you so much (laughs) all right we'll be right back are you looking for even more of the podcast and hosts that you love the podcast business news network is proud to announce that you can now listen live on the my tuner radio and online radio box apps for ios android and the amazon app store or check us out online. Search for Business News Network on mytuner-radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on onlineradiobox.com slash US so you don't miss a minute of the action.
Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.